What is good people? Welcome to the channel. It's Josh. Today I'm going to show you how to make a glaive guitar type beat. The first step to making these guitar glaive type beats is to have some guitar. A couple good places you can find guitars are Splice, Looperman, and Waves.com. Also, I've got a free guitar loop pack coming out soon, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. Here's the guitar that I chose for this. Just that kind of emo sound. Then I also got a counter melody with it. A lot of times for these type of beats in the verse or the pre-chorus, you'll have these kind of arpeggiated parts. And then for the hook, you'll change to these big strum type chords that sound a little something like this. And then halfway through, a lot of times they'll bring in either the counter melody or the main rhythm part just to keep the arrangement going. As far as the bass goes for these kind of songs, there are really only a couple options. First is the re space, and this is used for pre chorus or build up type sections. And here's what that sounds like. Now, this is actually one of the easiest sounds that you can make and applies to so many different genres of production. All you have to do is take a saw wave or a square wave, add some voices, and then just use some sort of filter to take out the highs. If you don't want to make these sounds yourself, just type in re space preset for whatever synthesizer you're using, and I'm sure something will come up that will work. Then you either got an 808 or a saw type bass. In this specific beat, I decided to opt for the saw bass. And here's what that sounds like. Real sauce here is making sure to add noise to your saw bass. The key with this is to distort it and add OTT. If you do those things, you'll be able to make beats for Glaive in no time. The rest of this in terms of tone is just messing with different kinds of distortions and saturation plugins. In this case, I use Crushed, but other plugins I enjoy are Saturn 2 and Isotope Trash 2. Also in these beats, sometimes it's good to use a live bass. That's what it sounds like in context. This is cool if you kind of want to combine that electronically glaive type feel with that acoustic indie type bob. Now I'm using Trillion here, but you could always use one shot bass samples that you find on Splice or on Reddit somewhere. Next we got synths and additional layers. Now you can really go crazy on this kind of stuff, but I decided to just go a simple route on this to just add a lead and then some chords. But some other things you can mess with though are adding an arpeggiator or plugins like Grossbeat or M Rhythmizer just to get different textures and tones out of everything. After you've kind of got all these instruments cooking, you're ready to get to the arrangement stage. And what you really need to be thinking of is in terms of four, eight, 12, and 16 bars. Every four to eight bars, something needs to be changing. As you can see with this zoomed out version of the project, every eight bars, something is happening. And what's happening is something is either being added or taken away. This can be the drums, another counter melody. This could be a whole different section of synths or something, but this is the way your brain kind of needs to be thinking when you're coming up with these kind of beats. And another thing you need to be thinking of is transitional sounds. And these usually come in the form of risers, impacts, or reverse impacts and reverse stomps or kicks. The way I like to think about this is if I just have different sections of a beat without any transitional sounds, it's not gonna be very smooth. It's gonna be kind of jarring for the listener. So I kind of want to use transitional sounds to kind of ease the listener into the next section. So when you're making these beats, do not neglect effects. Do not neglect do not effects. Neglect. Do not neglect effects. Can't emphasize it enough. Lastly, I'm gonna show you the little sauce on the master. A lot of times I'll just throw a saturator on there with a little clip or put this little T-Rex classic clip on there. I saw that CM Spark actually uses this as well. If any of y'all know him, definitely check him out. He's a dope producer and makes dope kit. The rest is just fluff that if you kind of just want to be extra. If you're like that, you can mess with things like the Slate FGX plugin, little Oxford inflator, just to kind of give it a little bit more saturation, boost the harmonics. And then you can also limit your beats, but sometimes I find when you limit the beat, it kind of takes away some of the transient and you know it hits harder without it sometimes so that's something to keep in mind a lot of times i'll use ozone just to kind of get the imaging right which is usually for bass i like to have it all mono usually in terms of imaging basically all i'm trying to do is make sure the frequencies have their own space in the mix i like all the bass frequencies to just sit in the middle because if they're really out in the stereo if your beats ever played out live or anything you're gonna have phasing issues and so i like to so i like to use imaging and mastering just to kind of deal with this now after you've got all of that down, the guitar, the synths, the bass, the effects should sound a little something like this.
Anyway, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If there's anything I can do to help at all, always feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel to get more of these weekly videos and check out my BeatStars website. Got a couple free kits on there that I really think will help you make better beats. All you gotta do, click the link below and they'll be emailed right to you. Regardless of anything, keep vibing, making dope music and I'll see you next time. Love you.